Peace and good and greetings once again from here at the Shrine of St. Anthony in the in word of greeting, especially to all of our companions of St. Anthony who uh, are joining us for uh, our video, continuing video series on uh, reflections on the Sunday readings. To quote a somewhat popular musical from the 1960s, sometimes we might uh, get a sense, uh, a feeling and uh, about life and say to ourselves, stop the world, I want to get off. Sometimes the burdens and challenges and difficulties of the world as we experience it each day uh, can be trying, can be tiresome almost, you might say. And I think in a certain sense, that's the word, that's a notion that Jesus somewhat reflects uh, in the reading that we will hear this Sunday uh, in the gospel from Luke's, from Luke's gospel. So let's listen to the text, and as we do, uh, to reflect a little bit about it. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great it is, is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. This is kind of a strange text, isn't it? It's, 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 it's not the, the good newsy kind of message that we normally expect, and that is sometimes presented as, as Christianity, even, you might say. Um, kind of a, the, the, the feel-good Christianity that is so popular in some spheres is not what we're hearing here today, obviously. But what we are hearing is Jesus expressing why he came. He is speaking a truly prophetic word. And again, not prophetic in the sense of fortune telling, but speaking the truth, speaking the truth to the world. And in, in actuality, this is a text that is very much in conformity with the overall sweep, if you will, of Luke's gospel. And we'll, we'll see that in a second or two. We think of Jesus as, this, as the great peacemaker, and indeed he is. He comes to establish peace, but not in the world, if you will. This is a very subtle point. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, that's not why he came. He came to establish the kingdom of God. Right? which is somewhat independent of the earth, independent of the world, if you will. And in fact, it's, it's contrary to the world. It's the, the antithesis of the world. The world and its values is not what Jesus came to save in a certain sense. Right? Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God among us. And because of that, there is division, rightly so, between the kingdom of God and the world. St. Bonaventure, the great Franciscan theologian of the, of the 13th century, shortly after the life of Francis, used a rather uh, interesting evocative image that we've referred to at times. He spoke about the shipwreck of the world and how Jesus came to save us from the shipwreck of the world. The kingdom of God is the lifeboat, if you will, that saves us from the shipwreck of the world. Right? And because of that, we need to choose. We need to decide. 
Do we live in the world? Do we stick with the world and its values? Or do we go with Jesus and the values of the kingdom of God? And it's a choice that each of us have to make. And it's a choice that creates division. Not for the sake of division, but again, to separate the kingdom of heaven from the values of a fallen world. Now again, this is in conformity with what we have already seen in, at the very beginning of Luke's gospel, in the infancy narratives. Think back to when the presentation of the, in the temple, right? Mary and Joseph bring the baby Jesus to Simeon, right? And what is his response? He says, this, this child of yours will bring division like a sword, right? This is what he's talking about. This is, this is the, Jesus now is the fulfillment of that prophetic word of Simeon, right? Jesus comes to bring division between the kingdom of God and the world. What would, what, and what will that division look like? From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son. This is a very interesting phrase because once again, it goes, it's, a, it's a referral back to the very beginning of the gospel, again, back to the infancy narratives, even before the infancy of Jesus, when the angel Gabriel comes the father of John the Baptist, and tells Zechariah that this son of yours, right, will bring union between father and son, right? That's the other side. That's, what, that's the part that Jesus doesn't say explicitly, right? right? The coming of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, will indeed bring division between peoples. Are you in or are you out? in the vernacular of the world, right? But for those who are in, a father and a son, for example, there is unity. And indeed, there will be peace. The kingdom of God in this world should be, key word, should be marked by peace. Sadly, we know that that is not necessarily always the case, is it? But that's the way it should be. There should be peace among the people of the kingdom of God. But of course, we do know division. There is, and we, we can look back historically, right? right? Think back to the very days of the, of, the, of the Acts of the Apostles, right? This new way of life of Christ, right? of this Christian church, comes into conflict with the world of Judaism, and the Christian church is persecuted, right? Same time, but quite a bit after, too, there's a conflict, division, between the kingdom of God, the people of God, and the Roman Empire, which actively persecutes Christianity. And of course, Christians have been persecuted throughout time. There's nothing new here, right? Even up to our own time right now, right? We can think back, think towards rather, our Christian brothers and sisters, especially our Catholic brothers and sisters who suffer as an underground church under communist Chinese rule, right? The church is still persecuted in very real ways in some places, right? There is division. But the interesting thing is, even despite that, the kingdom of God can and should know peace, right? The kingdom of God should be the breaking in of the peaceable kingdom of Isaiah into the world in which we live. And in fact, when we look at some of the heroic figures of the 20th century, we, can, we see that realized in a very, 
very real way in very difficult experiences. And here I'm thinking about two very specific people. One we're probably all familiar with, Maximilian Kolbe, right? The great conventual saint who ends up, is persecuted because of his faith, right? Ends up in a Nazi concentration camp, ends up being killed by the Nazi regime, right? But throughout that experience, throughout his long suffering in being killed by first starvation and then poison, he is at peace. He is at peace, right? Despite the horrors of the world, the kingdom of God in his life is indeed peaceful. Another figure from the same time, not so well known, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, another great figure of that time, a man who seek, sought to repel, if you will, the, 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 the values of the Nazi regime, right, and paid the price, was imprisoned, and eventually, for a long time, and is eventually is executed. But throughout his long imprisonment, he leaves all these wonderful writings. He's a man of peace. He knows peace, right? I think these two figures of the 20th century help us to understand what our life should be about. Indeed, sometimes we look around and we say, stop the world, I want to get off, right? But that's God's call, not ours, right? We are called to make real the kingdom of God. And that does mean division between our values and the values of the world, as it should be. But hopefully, we can know peace in that, in our faith, in our hope, and in our trust in the promise of the great prophet of Jesus Christ. Just want to once again, thank you for joining us today for this ongoing series. We've been kind of on hiatus for the last little bit, but now we should be back uh, through the, into the autumn, hopefully. And we hope uh, you'll continue to come and join us for these reflections. We wish you and remind you that you all are, are remembered in our prayers each day here at the Friary, uh, here at the Shrine of St. Anthony. We pray for all of your intentions, uh, uh, very particularly each evening at evening prayer. And uh, so know that you're in our prayers, and please keep us in the ministry here in yours. Uh, we are all indeed all companions of St. Anthony, seeking to live out the values of the kingdom of God. So until next time, peace and good. <laughs>